Okay, welcome back. Uh, we are now starting file five. Um, this is actually going to be file five and six uh, because I had to stop and look something up or I got interrupted or something. I don't remember what happened. So, but this is all going to be the allied. Uh, uh, there'll be some joint stuff here and then the allied phase. So, uh, this one won't be super exciting, but. Uh, it's going to be interesting because we get a few guys for the allies to move. That's it. And we have some we have some problems in the line. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So a lot of it is just going to be covering the special rules for Walked and Rhine. And um, really it's pretty easy because you don't have to worry about logistics and fuel and ammo and all that stuff. So we get to, we'll, we'll blow through those real quick just so you know what they are. We'll obviously address them in future videos when we need to, but uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, one of the things I started doing is um, some of the stuff was, I was reading the rules, it was fixed um, and some units should have movement allowance. So I went ahead and started uh, marking some of them. I don't know if you can see it right there, but I put a label on the unit and uh, wanted to mark a few of those so I don't accidentally move them or try to put a vehicle on them. And then there was some, uh, so it was anything with range of 18 has, is fixed and can't move. So if I find any other ones, I'll, I'll do them, but I was marking the ones that I found. <clears throat> uh, and then there was also some of these, uh, uh, Neville Werfers, the uh, 150s. I don't know if that's a millimeter thing or what. I don't know much about Neville Werfers, but um, they had six movement points like a foot unit. So uh, I went ahead, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, I put six movement allowance on the ones that I found. I found a few of them. So they were the 150M Neville Werfers. I'm wondering if that's like 150 millimeter or something. But again, I don't know how they kept track of Neville Refer size. Anyway, something to look into. That's the thing I like about Wargaming is you learn that kind of stuff. And it kind of gets you interested. So eventually I'll check it out where I probably never checked that out, right? All right. So I was marking some of those. So unless stated otherwise, the below restrictions are all used... In all scenarios, beginning on December 16th. So if you play Walked and Ryan, you can begin on December 16th, and you can you can you can begin on different time periods. I think there's one. I don't know the other sets. So don't don't hold me to this, but it's like December 21st. You know that kind of stuff. So you can kind of skip the certain phases if you don't want to fight those, um, and play shorter games that way. So, but these are all of them that start December 16th, and I think also you can play some of the scenarios where you start on the 16th and only play to like the 20th or 22nd or whatever, right? So you don't have to play the whole campaign, but I like to play the whole campaign. So, um, all right. So 3.318 joint air allocation phase. The Walked and Ryan air allocation has been modified to use with the updated Goss rules, C20.0 in Walked and Ryan. Uh, joint weather phase, the Walked and Ryan weather determination has been modified to use the Goss, updated Goss rules. So these are just some notes they had. I just figured instead of trying to guess which ones to tell you, I'd just go through them all. Joint command segment, December 16th scenarios, neither side may alter core army assignments or boundaries until December 19th. Now, even though I read that uh, later on, I will accidentally move Mr. Piper to attack and exploit this hole down here. Uh, he can't do that because there's a boundary right here. I'm not sure you probably can't. I can't highlight it, but that's where it is right there. Uh, so after I did that, he had to move and basically come along this road here and try to exploit up this way and, and a little bit on this edge. So I'm dancing on this boundary. Again, I talked about that in the last video or the one before. It's one of the intriguing parts about Goss is you have to kind of have a plan. You can't just be a reactionary player, which is what I am. I'm a, I'm a counter puncher. Uh, I wait for mistakes or opportunities, and I'm really good at pouncing on them. Uh, not so good of a planner. So if you're a good planner, Goss is excellent for that. And uh, uh, But I'm learning. 
that's the intriguing part, right? I don't look at it as a bad part. I just, it's something you got to learn. Now, I was thinking about this as important. Formations may attach and or detach units normally. So I didn't go back. I decided not to, because I was wondering, well, could I attach some of Piper's units to like the 18th VG? <laughs> or uh, they're not Volkswagen near the 18th Infantry Division. Yeah, I'm not sure they would do that, but that seems a little gamey. You can do it, I think, legally, but I didn't do it. So, and I don't know if you can legally. It, it does say you can do it normally, but it talked about not changing boundaries and stuff. So instead of getting into that and looking into it, um, I just left it where it is when I fix it later on. Uh, leader activation segment. Neither side may attempt to activate leaders until the 17th a.m., except for Piper will be active. He gets to activate automatically. So he's the exception. Um... He's automatically activated on this turn, so you'll see him right here as he flips over. Uh, thought I flipped him over. Surrender segment, December 16th scenario. Neither side checks for unit surrender until December 18th. Uh, joint logistics phase. Allied, all scenarios. The allied side does not use the full logistic rules. See specific scenario rules. So we don't have to worry about it right now. German side does not use the full logistic rules until December 20th in the AM turn. Uh, then there's the construction phase segment. The Allied side may not begin construction of bridges and or field works until December 17th. Demolition segment. The Allied side may not conduct prepared bridge demolition until December 17th. AM may not conduct hasty bridge demolition until December 16th PM. Extended night activity is in effect. Rest game turns uh, goes into effect starting December 20th. So there is no rest game turn in a, essentially in the first few days. So that's a little bit different. Uh, so here now are the December 16th AM game turn specific rules for this scenario. All units are in general supply, as in for Walked and Ryan 15.2.1. The sequence of play will return to normal. Ammo depletion checks will not be made. That's a big thing. All units have normal fuel. That's a big thing. You don't have to worry about that. Command boundary restrictions are in place. Again, I read all that and knew it, but I still made the wrong move. But that's, you know, we'll, we'll correct it. We caught it before anything got changed, and that's why we do it. But, uh, you know... I get, just get a little overexcited about the opportunity to drive that wedge there, but, uh, you know. Okay, 9.2.1, German Army Boundaries. The German Army Boundaries for December 16th scenario are all printed on the map or in effect until the Joint Command phase of December 19th AM game turn. So that's like this right here is the 6th and 5th, uh, 5th Panzer Army right here. Uh, for the Americans, it just happens that the 5th and the 8th Corps Boundary is right here. And if you float down here a little bit, you'll run into another uh, fifth and seventh army uh, boundary. Okay, so we got those boundaries; they cannot be changed. Uh, Allied army boundaries in all scenarios beginning on December 16th. The U.S. First Army zone of operation covers all Allied areas on all four maps. All corps on the map are assigned to the First Army. So we start out with just the two that we mentioned earlier. Uh, where was that? Uh, right up here. So we start out with 5th Corps and 8th Corps. And then they have some rules about that. Uh, let's see. Scenario Group Allied Corps Boundary Restrictions, 8th and 5th Corps. The boundary line is printed on the northeast map. We just showed you that. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but it's this gray dotted line uh, right here. So that's the boundary line that's printed on the map. And here's the yellow dotted line for the for two of the German armies, and the other one's down south. We'll zoom out. That's too too zoomed in. Okay, let's see. Uh, U.S. units that start on the December 16th scenario on the map may not cross that boundary. So uh, this guy right here can't jump down to here, and you know, vice versa. These this guy here can't jump up there. Uh, which makes me think, did I do this right earlier? I think I did. Let's see. Yep, I'm okay. 
I was worried because this is the guy that activates later, and I was like, oh, he wasn't north of the line, was he? But nope, the line is right there, and he stayed south of the line. So, <clears throat> um, so they can't cross that boundary line until December 18th, night game turn. Units that enter the map as reinforcements are not affected by this rule until they reach their assembly areas. And I don't know if I covered this in earlier videos, but I, one of the things I love about Walk and Ryan is look at this huge map, right? Zoom way out. This is a big map. Um, this is where we were looking at earlier, right about here. Uh, yep, right in about here. Let's see. I think right. Where was I? Is that right? Oh, right. Give me some, right here. This is where we were zoomed in earlier. Was this area right here? So when it, reinforcements come from up here or down here or over here, you have to pick an assembly area for that division or core or whatever, and those guys have to use strategic movement or movement strategic movement to get there, and then they can come out of strategy. So you have to kind of figure out where you're going to have to bring guys and get them there, and then they assemble there, and then they can basically go from there, right? So we'll get into some of that. Uh, depends on how far we play into the scenario, but I just think that's really cool. <coughs> I apologize. I still got that little bit of that cold I had over the holidays, but uh, I think it's really cool that you, you don't just like, okay, let's see, I'm moving on to the board now. Where do I need these guys right now? You know, you, you got to kind of plan like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to use Hoffelays here, however you say that right here. I'm going to use that as my staging area for whoever's coming in from way up north or or whatever. I'm not saying that's the one you'd use, but let's just say that's the deal. And by the time they get here, what's all changed here, right? So I just think that's super cool. Uh, it's just one of them nerdy things, right, where it's just super neat to see how things work out and having to having to guess a little bit at how things may or may not change. Uh, let's see. As additional U.S. cores arrive, the Allied player must designate core boundaries during their first AM command phase after the core arrives. Now, the game I'm playing with Clay right now, I think we're on like the 21st or 22nd. So there's a lot of cores on the map by then. And it really gets interesting trying to make those boundaries. So that's really kind of a game within the game. If you like a lot of crunchiness to your game, there's a lot of fun you can have with supplies and logistic in this game. It's not just about the combat, although that's obviously the part that most of us dig or get into. But you can really have some fun trying to work out uh, boundaries. I know guys that give specific orders to each division, which honestly, in a game of this scope, you could use that to really organize your attack. And it would obviously take a while to set all that up. But once you have it set up, I mean, it's a brilliant way to formulate a plan right okay traffic congestion and bridge bottlenecks are in effect uh the allied turn okay so we're going to start the allied turn so on the allied turn let's zoom in a little bit uh the m5 uh company and the 32nd uh recon battalion of the eighth corps gets activated all right, that's what these guys I was talking about here. There's some 14, so there they are. We got some Stuarts, and we got some, we got some recon. And my thinking was, is, wow, there's get, there's nothing, there's only artillery here. <laughs> the 106th has given up a pretty good hole uh, north here. We have some elements of, I think that's 14th Cav. Yep, it's 14th Cav. So we need to probably start to block up some of these roads going east and west so again that's the only units that activated other than those units that activated from attacks but we're pretty limited on what we want to do with them so uh you can't do any hasty bridge demolition uh engineer units may not begin bridge uh or field work construction so we can skip that uh, truck points may be used to motorized active al allied units. All fire missions are subject to a minus one DRM. Uh, Germans uh, in battery artillery units may not go out of battery. All German ground assaults receive an automatic one column shift to the right. Oh, these are still the, the uh, 
the December 16th special rules. So the Allies still get a shift to the right, so that are the Germans. Exception, the German side has not received that against 4th Infantry Division. That's way down south, if you remember from the last uh, video. Stockpiled ammo, paints, ammo points may be used to conduct, conduct intensive barrages. Uh, check for van der Heit parachute drop during the joint command phase. The heavy bridges at Hex's SE 4517 and 4413 remain under construction. The heavy bridge at SE 4822 is completed on a die roll of 0 to 2. So SE 4822 is right about here, I think. No. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Right here, this heavy bridge right here. So on a zero to two, that baby gets constructed, which would be huge. Um, during the German turn, engineer units may initiate bridge and fieldwork construction. Uh, units in maneuver reserve mode may not leave maneuver reserve mode. Piper leader is activated. The 150th Panzer Brigade may not move. Army truck points are not available to the Germans for motorization. So joint air allocation, neither side has any. Now we're going to start getting into the turn. Joint weather phase. Uh, we will be playing variable weather, but on December 16th, you always use the historical, so it's overcast with normal ground conditions. So first turn is kind of set, joint command phase. Uh, the only thing we need to do here is uh, leader activation, so Piper. So he flips over, and there he is, with his little image there. We activate a Piper. Uh, let's see what else we got to do next. Oh, I marked some of these maneuver reserve just to, you know, distinguish Piper's units and then all these guys are in maneuver reserve for the first SS Panzer. All right, Allied, all scenarios. The Allied side does not use full logistic rules, see specific scenario rules. We'll get into that when the Allies have to do it. German side does not use full logistic rules until the December 20th AM game turn. Some of this is a little bit repeated, but I, I want to be thorough on all this stuff, so we follow the specific rules. Uh, Allied, uh, December 16th through 18th, they have six truck points for the First Army. Uh, German, December, December 16th, there are no truck points available. There are no worries on fuel or ammo for either uh, this turn either for either of them. If playing the December 16th campaign game, the German player begins the game with 10, 10 ammo points in stockpile. So you divide those up between the armies. Uh, the ammo points cannot be used to modify the German base ADV. Now, for those that are not familiar with logistics, you could use ammo points to adjust your army ammo depletion value. Uh, you cannot do that on December 16th, but we'll get into that one of these turns when we actually do it. I don't want to get into a whole process that we're actually not going to do right now. They may be used, as we said earlier, to conduct intensive fire and replenish artillery units. So we'll get into that. All units are automatically in general supply for the entire game day. So that's a big thing you don't have to worry about. German units all have normal fuel. So on to the Allied turn. Mode determination. Okay, so... Um, everything's going to be left in tactical mode. We're not putting anybody into... Uh, strategic mode or uh, anything else we can't go into we can't go into combat reserve or anything special like that uh, so we don't have a lot of options yet construction phase we can't do any can't build IPs or or anything like that we just have to sit here for a little bit we're still kind of shocked at what's happening the movement phase it's going to be light but, but we're going to take it right uh, inactive units cannot all right so I did find this, and I don't know if we used it in the last turn, so I'll have to try to remember it. It's one of those little things that you don't use very often, so it's not ingrained into my psyche. But inactive units may not provide rib, and I think we were doing that with some of the inactive units. Uh, I'm not going to go back and fix those. That's where I've talked to you guys before about don't get wrapped up and everything's got to be perfect. You want to play the game the best you can, but just you got to move onward and upward, right? If you're going to keep restarting every time you find a new rule you didn't do, it's going to be a long haul for any game you play. I'll tell you that right now. And I play with some pretty smart guys and stuff just gets forgotten sometimes, right? That's just the way it is. So 
hopefully will remember that if you see me doing it in any of the videos if you're watching them call me out on it but i did find that out and the reason i found that out is i was looking double checking on combat reserved uh combat reserves and you can't put anybody in combat reserve which i think i did wrong in my game with clay in fact poor clay uh, we did a lot of stuff wrong for the allies, but Clay doesn't like a lot of special rules. He likes he Clay likes to say, you know what, throw it on the map and do whatever you want. He doesn't like automatic lulls. He just wants the forces and do what you can, right? So without knowing that, that's kind of what he got in our game because there were some units that probably shouldn't have been activated or they would have had to have stayed in a certain area as I've been reading and following all these special rules. Uh <laughs> that's just the way it is so if you're watching our walked in ryan game with clay and i uh we didn't follow some of this stuff so all right so yeah so i was looking on the cr and inactive units can't do that so placing reinforcements there are none to place this turn uh so units in strategic mode would move now there are none the active player would declare and conduct any Coupe de main attacks, and I believe that's when you are jumping on a bridge that an enemy might try to blow. Uh, there are none of those for us to do, and that is a new rule in the uh, update on the rules. I've never ever used that, but there are none of them. So the active player moves units in tactical mode. So first you're going to want to move mechanized class units that are using road movement. Then you move all units not using road movement. So First, like I said earlier, the 106th has some big issues. So we are going to get this 14th Cav over here to help. And he's got 14 movement points. So he's going to truck along this road here. Um, now, this is a mechanized unit technically. Uh, on some of the boards we've talked and different things, you can, as long as an HQ doesn't move, declare that it's off the roads. And it doesn't block up the roads. It'd be silly to have an HQ sitting in a town. And every time tanks came through, it would halt the tank movement. But this just doesn't even make any sense. So it's not going to halt it there. So he's going to keep trucking. We're using this nice little secondary road here as we're trucking through St. Veith and then to Schoenberg. And uh, that's all the further we can get it. And then I just grabbed the M5 and threw it behind him because he did not have enough movement to move into here, because when you move into here, it costs extra movement points, and you stop. So he doesn't have that. So they got to there. Uh, very much needed, because this is starting to look a little bit ugly, and uh, we'll see how that progresses. Uh, now I'm going to move non... That was, all my, that was my only road movement. So now I'm going to move some non-road movement. Uh, so these guys are coming out of this uh, improved position, and they are going to move up here. They do, they're they not real thrilled about being in the clear. I think that's a village, correct? Uh, yep, it's a village of uh, Au, Au, and uh, the 470, 472nd, 422nd, 422nd, 422nd Regiment, 1st Battalion, is going to have to get in the way of the 18th division and buy us some time. Americans spend a lot in this first few turns trying to buy time. And that was the best thing I could think to come up with because he got activated from attacks. But uh, these guys can stay here and create a little area. But uh, we got to start, we got to start creating some kind of a line, even if it's just a hole for a morning or a, or a day, if we're lucky. All right, so we lost that. It was an it was on a vantage point, which is a bummer. But uh, you know, there's you gotta you gotta make your choices, right? So I thought that was a good choice. Um, oh, and I also wanted to make sure. Um, so I, when I originally did that, I got excited and started moving because I was planning for the hundred and sixth, and basically I got to make sure there's no other road movement that I need to do. So, uh, these guys here are next. Uh, so what I did with them, that was that little anti-tank unit that's going to run into here with that infantry unit. Uh, there's the 28th. Uh, these guys are moving. I believe they're right about here. 
after they retreated, they are basically going to uh, try to get to a better position. Right here, I think there's a vantage point. Yeah, there's a vantage point there, so they're going to get there and try to hold as long as they can. They're just a measly little company. Oh, you know what? I did learn something new. If I go to uh, preferences and auto report moves, um, that'll help when you move. It will give auto reports on it. We'll see how that works with this. I did it on a different module and it worked great. It would actually tell me the hex numbers. I don't know if it'll do that on here or not, but hopefully we'll see. So let's see. Oh, the 394th. Um, that's up here, I believe. Well, we'll just click and it'll go to it. Uh, yeah, they're right over here. Uh, they got punched right here by the 12th VG. Uh, VG. Uh, they need to get away because they have one step left. So they need to they need to move away. So they started there. We'll go there, 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 and there. We're going to sit in those woods. We're going to be close so that we can react. Uh, this is not our army boundary. That's a German one. Uh, we don't really like to leave our artillery open like that, but these guys do have, you know, they're going to get slowed up as extra movement points, so there's no roads there. But, uh, yeah, we got to try to hold a little bit longer. I, I think this is fascinating. I love the uh, trying to figure out, like, how do you protect St. Beath uh, and how do you get these guys out of here so they don't get cut off? Where are these guys going to go? That's crucial, right? We got these little combat commands that are kind of pocketed around. There's another one down over here. Where are they going to go to try to slow up? I, I just get, I'm sure you guys do too in Battle of the Bulge. I just get fascinated by that. And so basically that's it. Uh, everyone else has to hold or remember if they're facing sideways, these units have not been activated yet. Uh, so we don't get a choice. We don't, we can't move them. I can't run, the, otherwise I'd be running with these artillery. They would have, they would have went into out of battery mode and they would have been running down these roads to get back here. But they do not get to do that, so not yet. All right, so uh, PA movement would be next. There's none. Command status segment. And uh, I did forget uh, during leader activation is when you roll for von der Heights airdrop, okay? If the result is a zero, the German player immediately conducts the von der, von der Height paradrop. Otherwise, it's automatic on December 17th. I rolled a nine, so no pair drop, so it didn't matter. Um, yeah, ignore that. Um, I start. I was going to go up and start doing supply or something, but we don't have supply. Quick construction, uh, none was allowed, so we can skip that. Inactive player's exploit phase. Now, I put a little note in here. I said there is none, but I would love to see somebody put together, I think, uh, Hex to Hex, Jeff, did a video on exploitation. I probably need to go watch that again. I, I have never really understood the best way to use exploitation in this game. And uh, I would like to learn how to do that because I think tactically I'm missing some stuff I can use on that. So that's an area that I'm going to want to work on. As we progress this video, I might want to do some of that stuff. But it was a mute point on this turn anyway. The combat phase. Well, we, would, uh, we could tactical assault designate units. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to we're going to stay dug in as much as we can. And we we're not going to risk losing any steps early. Now, one thing I did forget. If we look at the charts, let's see where are they right here? Um, during the so there's been a little change in some of the sequence, and I don't know exactly what all of them is. But in the joint logistics phase, I forgot to do. The replacement point segment phase right here. Uh, this is where you would get your replacements, but you'd also cull your replacements. And how you do that is when you have casualties. Let's look at the uh, let's look at the Americans. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. If you look here, from artillery and from melee and everything, the uh, the Americans have lost. Oh, 
but I didn't lose 41. So I'll have, to, I'll have to look at that. Let's look at the German one. I must have messed that up and I'll fix it later. Let's look at the German one. Uh, if you look at German losses, they've lost, this is times 10, so they've lost 15 uh, infantry steps. Okay? So they've lost 15 infantry steps. They can call those based on the uh, formula, and we'll go through that real quick, but they basically convert these into steps, like one for every four, every five, whatever, but we'll look at that exactly. Uh, okay, so U.S. Infantry, for every four infantry you've lost, they will get one infantry step. And for armor, for every three steps you've lost of armor, you can convert that into one armor replacement. Uh, Germans are infantry, it's one to five, and armor is one to six, so it's not as good for them. Now, that's where this log file ended because uh, I want, I either I just ran out of time, I don't remember because it was a while back that I did this, but uh, we will just go start up the next one, which is file number six, and it just continues with the culling of the uh, step losses. But uh, this gets set up. Take me one second here. And zoom, zoom, zoom. And we'll just get started. So OK, so uh, infantry, the US had lost eight and a half infantry steps and one armor. So I don't know what I had messed up over here originally. Uh, something was out of place, but I, I figured it out. And maybe that's why I stopped the video to go figure that out because something was messed up, right? So the U.S. had lost eight and a half infantry steps and one armor. So that one armor you can't do anything with, right? Because you need you needed, I think, for the Americans it was three. But that eight and a half for every four infantry, we can create a replacement. So the so they'll make two replacements and they'll leave that half step still in there. You don't lose that half step; it just sits there until you can call it. The German uh, Six Panzer Army lost eight infantry, so they can still make one, and they'll have leftover uh, points. And I was doing some marking. So Fifth Panzer Army lost six, so they can make a replacement. And Seventh Army only lost one infantry, so they can't make any replacements. So um, basically, the Americans get two, and it's all one army. It's all First Army, so I can put them wherever. And the... Uh, Germans get one for 6th Panzer and one for 5th Panzer and none for 7th Army yet. All right, so, uh, oh, and 5th Panzer Army lost a half armor. Um, but yeah, so they, they couldn't do anything with that. Okay, so that was the culling part that would have happened, just again to clarify, that's up here during the joint phase. We've actually run through all of this uh, over here already, and we're actually coming down into here. And the reason I ran into that is you do your tactical designation segment, which I didn't have any, and then I said, oh, replacement segment. And I think that's in a different spot than it was. I can't remember. Something changed where it was like, wait a minute, I didn't call them, and then I went and looked for it and found it, and that's why we went back and did that. So now we're going to be able to place those guys. Okay, so the U.S. will go first. I use this little spade here to kind of move it around so I can kind of use it as a pointer. So I'm thinking that this is a pretty crucial spot to defend here. And they lost some guys, so we're going to try to hold that gap. And then this is another spot that's important because he's down to one step, right? So because he has that spade under him and he's flipped over, he's really a 2-3-3, three, three, I think it is. I think you round up. But for sure, this is a 2 might be 223, but I'd have to double check that. But anyway, these are cut in half. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I was thinking those are the best two because I don't want to have to resurrect a unit because that costs extra when you resurrect a dead unit. So I'll take get rid of that spade under there. And this guy over here, we'll see if I can do it here. Is the page down, and we see he went flipped over, so he's back to full strength. So that's important. Uh, he's kind of out there on an island by himself, and that's kind of a big deal. Okay, German six Panzer. And uh, I might have did that wrong. I wouldn't have done it until their turn. So 
just remember that. I did it early because I was used to, uh, I think in the old sequence of play, you did your replacements at the same time. I can't remember. I could be wrong on that, but for some reason I got confused out of this round, but it'll all work out in the end. So the 277th got hammered, so I decided to put some guys there because they, they took a beating all across the front. And then the 326th, they were having some problems, so they're, they're the ones trying to get through this gap. <coughs> Let's see. So here I said I only got one, though. So going to help the 326 to try to pressure that entrenchment, too. And the 277, they have panzer units behind them, so I was uh, rationalizing that these guys can come in and start pounding if these guys get too beat up, so... Ended up going with this guy here and getting him getting him a step back. Now remember that would happen during the German turn. Uh, my confusion was that this is a joint phase here for doing the uh, replacement point segment. That's for converting and determining. Uh, this down here is during the Allied player turn right now, so I would do this during the German German player turn. <clears throat> which in the old combat sequence that would make a big difference because you cannot move and get replacements um, I think they changed that I will look that up though and report that next time. I'm pretty sure they changed it where you could get, uh, if you move and stuff, you can. There's just certain restrictions. So, all right. So, 5th Panzer Army has one. So, we gave them one down here with the 18th VG, or I don't know why I keep calling them VG, the 18th Infantry Division, because just about every one of them are a Volks Grenadier unit. There isn't very many straight up divisions. So, we end up putting one on there to help fill up that hole. So. Okay, so supply determination segment. Everyone's in supply for the whole day. Ammo replenishment segment. There's none to do. And uh, we don't have to spend ammo or check uh, ammo depletion on artillery. Fatigue recovery segment. There is none. Delay marker removal. We don't have any of those. So... This would basically, we would start the German turn. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do with Piper. Remember, I made that little mistake and went south because I tried to come crashing through here and attack. Um, it doesn't change too much, but I had to switch my attack up here because, remember, I cannot change these boundaries. So, anyway, uh, that's not a super active uh, turn, but things will start getting pretty hectic. I'm wondering if, like, once all this stuff is activated, um, I'll have to figure out how I want to break up the turns. Maybe I'll, I'll have to figure that out. I, I might just try to, you know, like, what are we at here? We're at 38 minutes. I mean, my goal is to try to stick it to an hour or less. I guess if you guys have any feedback on that, do you like an hour-long video? Do you want shorter videos? Do you want longer videos? I mean, I when I watch guys like uh, uh, Tabletop's Edge, uh, Hex to Hex, I watch those guys. I, I like long videos. I just put them on and watch them. So I'm I'm kind of a nerd that way, I guess. But so that's the deal. So okay, I guess we're done. I'm gonna call this one a wrap. I'll get this one posted for you guys to watch. And then uh, these are how many I've done. I've actually done seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I'm on the German administrative phase. I think I'm getting ready to do the German movement phase. But I thought I better get a bunch of these posted because I'm spending more time playing it and not enough time posting videos. And if I get too far ahead of myself, I forget stuff. So, you know, like what happened back on these videos. So, yeah. So I still got four more log files recorded. So I'll try to get those done over the next couple of weeks. And then I want to get to, to where to see if we can do some damage here. It's the thing. It's a little bit uh, schizophrenic because at one point I'm like, yeah, I want to punch a hole here. And then the other part of me is like, yeah, can I, 
can I stop the attack? So, but that I like that with playing solo. I like to, you know, you. For me, I can just enjoy both sides. So I hope you guys are able to do that too. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will uh, talk at you later.